Now, I've got Raf in the studio. A very big good afternoon to you, Raf. Just turned midday. How are you doing? Uh, farewell, Jim. Thanks for the invitation. No problem. How's your morning been so far? So far, so good. So far, really good, so good. Yes. Uh, because, you know, I've realised it's quite a while that you've been coming to see us at the radio now. I think that this must be the seventh, seventh. radio show, I think. It's, our, it's, our, it's our seven-week anniversary. Yes, uh, should we celebrate afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we should. Hey, so yeah. firstly, tell me, how have you found coming to the radio? Very interesting. Um, I think when, when we first talked about it uh, a few months ago, um, we, I think I, I liked the concept. But the, what I really like about it is because I've done radio um, uh, like uh, discussion panels and, and, and was commenting that back, on was, news, Was that back in your Belgium days? No, there was, there was uh, also this year and, and last year, uh, okay. but also for international radio channels, not, not in Barcelona, outside Barcelona. Um, and then it's, you, you don't get a lot of time to, to share an opinion. or it, it, It's really, as part of the news, it's, it's 30 seconds, two minutes, whatever. So interesting here is that we get a bit more time um, to, to expand on some topics. Mm. Absolutely. We, we, we get also inputs to, to your, your Facebook from, from listeners that topics that are on their mind, challenges they have, doubts they have. And then we, we, can, we, can, we can pick up these things and, and, and provide some context and some answers. I think that's, that's great, right? Because in the end, we, we, we want to be relevant for our audience, for our clients. And this is, I, I just like, it's, it's, it's nice. Cool. Hey, well, let's face it, the real estate market is hot. And so as it happens over these last six weeks, I mean, I'm guessing you've seen all sorts of things happening. I mean, any particular changes in the market? Well, I think what we see now, in, so we're near the end of July, mo m many people that, that decided they want to buy something or to sell something, they, they want to close deals before summer. And summer in Spain, as, as, you, as you might know, mean, means August. In August, activity really goes to a... Um, in, in, into survival mode. Um, not much is happening in the market in most sectors, but probably expect to, uh, except tourism maybe. Um, so people want to get some security on can I get, uh, can I buy that apartment before summer or can I sell my place before summer? Because if they don't get a deal now in July, it means, um, pragm pragmatically speaking, that uh, you go to mid September, maybe end September, you pick up discussions again beginning of September, but then before you get something going, it's easily end of September, maybe later. So that's a lot of time, and people obviously prefer some some certainty uh, for for their for their. So, so you're seeing some sort of pressure to close deals. Yes, there there is certainly pressure to. to and, close and, deals. and is that more coming from the sellers or the buyers? Um, well, we we see it more from the buyers because we obviously work only for for buyers, but we've also seen in our interaction with with sellers that some people have been more open to a negotiation. Uh, to get a deal confirmed, to get a signature on paper from a buyer. And uh, so they can go on, the seller can go on holiday knowing that the money is in his bank account or it's going to be in his bank account in the next weeks, rather than going on holiday and saying, let's see if we can sell it in September or October. Well, there is a certain yeah. peace of mind once you can actually go to your bank account and see the cash that's yes. really there. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I, have you always been working in real estate, by the way? I, 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 I've not, but... Um, I've always been working with buyers now, um, so I, it's actually interesting because I, I, I started my, so I, I'm from Belgium, I, I, I lived afterwards in, in, in Germany, then came to Barcelona, uh, my wife is from Barcelona, that was, that was the main reason why I came here, but um, so I spent um, I think about 16 or 17 years of my career working in big multinational companies, um, big consulting companies, um, Accenture was the last one, you, you might know that name or that company. Um, and I exclusively worked for buyers of big international companies. What does it mean? Like, what, what do big companies buy? If you look at a, at a manufacturing company, we really bought for them. How do you best buy metal casting parts or plastic injection molding parts or electronics, um, these kind of things. But equally, how do you buy your telephony contracts and your car fleet? And it's, uh, all these things that a company buys in terms of direct goods and, so, and, and also in the services part, we looked at all that spent and optimized it. So getting best prices for, for our buyers um, and taking out the risk so there is no interruptions in, in supply chains. And oh, this, this becomes maybe too technical now. But, uh, so it was about helping buyers. Now I, and I traveled crazily across, across the world for working across many different sectors, uh, but it was a fantastic, fantastic learning uh, experience. The, the learning curve is so steep when you see all different sectors across, across all continents. 
um because i worked with with people in 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 every country of europe but, but big teams in in in, in prague bratislava and in in Shenzhen, china in bangalore india manila and philippines south america uh, london uh, pittsburgh in the us so very very global for nice but i wanted to do something i had this entrepreneurial drive in in, in and it's very hard to combine that with a big multinational, which is a bit more, uh, which is slower than, in, less dynamic than, than a small startup firm. So now that you're now kind of more of a free spirit, now that you're running your own company, correct? I mean, I mean, definitely. Um, and w what I did is we, I applied the whole thinking of how do you help a buyer to how do you help a buyer in the real estate sector and then specifically in Spain. Um, so that, that principle didn't change. Because um, it... P part of what we do is it, it's not about apartments and bricks. It, it's about people in the end, right? You, you need to understand exactly what someone wants, how his or her dream place would look like. Otherwise, you can't find it. Huh? So it's a lot of people, a lot of interaction, communication, um, very nice. And, and, and obviously, there's a, l a lot more freedom that, that comes with, with running your own business. Um, and and, and that, that's a very rewarding part of it. You, you can determine your own agenda. You can to some extent, uh, maybe choose some, some of the work you do and, 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 and you don't do. So for me, it's, um, I mean, what I'm doing here at the radio show, what I'm doing in the day-to-day -day work with our clients, and I always say it, it's not my job. It doesn't feel like a job. It's just, it, it's my dream, and, and I think people feel that. Uh, our clients say they feel the passion for, um, for getting work done properly, um, passion for people, for design, for... for, for impacting uh, people's life because in the end they, they dream of, of buying something of having a nice house a home and and, and we help them so they they i think that that's it's very rewarding um for um, compared to i think working for this for these big global uh, multinational companies sure so it's the human dimension that really motivates you it's it's very important to me um because you you can't run. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced you can't run any type of service business from behind the desk or from behind a, a, a laptop screen. You need to work with people, and that's also why. I mean, we we speak with with the buyers obviously a lot of time, but also with people in the market here that have access to great properties. Because if you don't know them personally, they will never give you give you great properties. And and we got to the point where they they call us when something great is is there on the market um we are often the the first the first person to see the the property for sale and that's what our clients like that that's value right you you find something that's not on the market that they can, can't find themselves so yes the the people interaction is is critical all email uh, databases phone calls that helps but that's not going to make you a successful business now raf we've been here as we said for six weeks so what other subjects have you covered over the last six weeks what have what do you remember yeah i think um we with with the audience with the listeners in mind we, we talked in the last weeks about um about challenges that that buyers face when when you want to buy something in, in in spain um podcasts are available on on, on your on, on mixcloud sure, on mixcloud.com mixcloud. mixcloud. yes on, that's on, right also on our facebook site um so challenges bu buyers face because the market is Spain is different, and um, also for the property market, it's not it's not a regulated market. So there's it's a bit of a minefield, a jungle where um, it's very hard to trust uh, people because there's no, there's just no code of uh, behavior, no code of ethics in in there, and it makes it very difficult as a buyer. Um, people have heard lots of horror stories about things that went wrong, and and all these things they went through the official Spanish process, and and you still have the surprises. So. Challenges is, is one thing. Um, we talked a lot about, I think, the market, what is happening in the market, what is happening with the prices, who is buying, and, and there in a nutshell we saw the market. There's obviously more and more transactions every quarter. There is more and more international buyers every year. Prices are going up uh, across all of, across most parts of Spain, average for Spain they are going up. They're certainly going up for areas like Barcelona. Um, so it's a hot market to buy, for, for buying. And for investing, because also rents are going up. So that, that was a bit the, 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 the market um, uh, topics, the, the insights on the market. And then we talked in the radio shows, we went into a bit more detail um, about um, wh how do we, from Inspired, from Inspired Boutique Apartments, w what do we do for, for you as a buyer? How do we help you overcome these challenges and, and remove the barriers on, the, on your road to, to your dream place? Right? Now, uh, 
I know that one of the risks about having a business that's so closely aligned to a, a lifestyle, which I'm guessing yours is, is that you end up working 24 hours a day. Has that been your, is that your blessing and your curse? Um, it, it's a good problem to have, to be honest. I mean, we, we, we're growing. We have, um, if I look back today versus a year ago, we have about, the, I think, approximately a double, um, double as many clients today versus a year ago. And, and try to three times as many uh, potential clients leads than, than a year ago. So you see there's more demand for this type of service. Um, we, we're fixing that because we're growing, so we're adding people to the team as well. Um, adding, uh, got a meeting later with an architect who's coming on board. Uh, we've got people um, to, 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 to pre-select properties as well, right? You get, uh, you get two great lawyers. Uh, so this, this team, team is growing definitely. So I think, I'm sure we get, we get over this uh, there's a mountain of, uh, of lots of work. It's a question of getting, managing it properly. Now, I know that you're, when you talk about international clients, I mean, you really get clients from all over. I mean, we met uh, Andy from Asia yeah. last week. Um, uh, is that any, do, you, do you see more of that coming? We, y yes. Um, I mean, in the market overall, there's more international buyers, and, and we see it as well on, on our side. Um, wh wh why is that? Um, it's quite simple. There's, um, Spain is, is seen as, um, as a secure place for, for putting your savings. Because in the end, it, it's, if you buy property, you, you take savings or part of your savings and maybe some financing. You put it in a property and you live there or you rent it out. But th that, that's the mechanism behind it in the end. And where you want to do that in a country where there is or in a place where there is as low as possible risk that something goes wrong with, with your savings. I mean, because I mean, it, it, in the end, the property is going to be of your children in the future and so people uh, risk risk is one dimension and then the, the other thing to look at of course is it is lifestyle thing many people just like they they, they love Barcelona maybe they've lived here or they want to come and live here and and that's an important decision factor um, how about how about if Catalonia splits away that's sort of a geopolitical risk, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, I think I think there is. I need to see what what happens in the next months with the with the political process. Now, what what, what we do see is, um, it, it's not stopping buyers in the property sector. It's not because so actually are going up. International buyers are increasing. Um, it's not stopping um, foreign companies to invest in Catalonia. So not in property, but just in any sectors. Um, we've seen, I mean, Tesla is building its European headquarters here, Amazon is building its, its center for Southern Europe in Barcelona, Volkswagen is making big investments. We might get in Barcelona the European agency for... Um, 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 what, the medical one? Yeah, the medical one. Uh, yeah, correct. when that leaves Which London. leaves London because of the Brexit. Yeah. So Barcelona is on their top list and, and Barcelona got, got, has got a building ready where they can move into, etc. So <laughs> these companies are putting a very clear bet on, on, on Barcelona. They are committing billions and billions to, um, to it. It was not an article, uh, I think, yesterday or a few days ago in another company. There, there is this uh, hard rock who is who was put investing $2 billion in this entertainment park on the south, south from Barcelona, on the Costa Dorada. And th that's big numbers. You can't ignore them. So what happens if independence uh, w would, would, would occur? Uh, I think no, nobody knows, but... The, the facts are there. Investment keeps uh, keeps increasing in in the region, and I think Barcelona is. I mean, it's a brand on itself. It's it's a very attractive. It's an unbeatable city, to be honest. If you think about it, so you could um, find any nice Mediterranean city at the sea, which is affordable to live and is two hours flight from everywhere in Europe. And, and so the options are limited, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. So maybe Lisbon, but it's very small and very different. So sure. So, well, clearly you've chosen the right city to launch a real estate company in, and that's for sure, and you're here at a very, very good time. Um, just outside of the real estate world, because I know you've got one or two other interests too in the city, don't you? Um, yes, besides um, I mean, beside the real estate thing. Um, so you're an entrepreneur in general? Yes. Um, so that, and part of what I did during my, sub I, I took a sabbatical when I was working in this big multinational company. It was probably the, one of the best things I did in my life. Um, I can recommend anyone. <laughs> I hope the HR departments are not listening too much now. So it, it's a great time to reflect and think about what you want to do and, 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 and build your own dream, basically. Right? Cause, uh, as someone famous said, if, if you don't build your own dream, I mean, someone else will hire you to, build, to help 
than build share yeah. dream so yeah. So I tried to I tried different things, and I'm, I'm a big wine lover, and, and specifically for Spanish wines. So my initial idea was to to to, to set something up in in that sector, but it was it's very hard, and it didn't work out. And I was combining wine and cheese and all these things, and, but I couldn't find the right business model to make it work and, and make a living out of it. So I keep it as a hobby now, not as a business. What did you try and plant a vineyard? <laughs> no, 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 not not to that extent. It was more like, more more commercial and and, and and between different countries. Uh, but so um, okay, so that was your thing. Now. So yeah. you're f back back focusing on real estate as your yeah. number one project. Yeah, and then the second big project I'm mean, involved is uh, we launched uh, nothing to do with real estate. Uh, a real estate, um, uh, sorry, real estate, um, a retail a fashion platform ah. where you can really buy fashion goods online. And the the big thing is you can actually try these things at home. So your um, your house becomes becomes your fitting room basically, and you you only pay it when you decide what you want to keep. It's not like you pay in advance, you get delivered, and then if you don't like it, you send it back, and then they give you the money. But no, no, you only pay once you decide what you what you keep. Um, it's it's live in Barcelona now. It's called Chowea Chowea dot com. Um, uh, I think we've got 40 nice brands on it, 2,000 products at the moment. We license a month. Um, uh, looking for investments now to. to what what if people don't send their stuff back? Uh, well, there, there's some. Um, we got we got a model where we can um, block uh, or lock uh, block their credit cards. Basically, oh, if, they, if so. you don't do it, there okay. is a, there, there is a mechanism for seeing for that. Not that I want to encourage people to do no, that. No, no. Uh, okay, good. Mate. But you are a busy guy. I think it's fair to say. Are you married to the job? Uh, I think one of the big learnings I I took from from my time at the multinationals and certainly at Accenture is that you need to combine work and life because if, uh, if if you don't do it, I mean it's going to be you're going to hit a wall at some point, right? So I'm trying to be better at it to to, to combine both both worlds and I give a lot of importance to the to the family part of it and to the person. I need personal time as well. To the the best idea is to don't come while you're rushing and when you're um, running from a meet another, they come when you have time to disconnect. And in in my case, with a glass of good wine. And <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, Ralph, I've got a question for you because uh, I'm happy to say that we've continued to get lots of questions coming in uh, via the Facebook page. And if you want to reach out to us, you can also get in touch via Twitter. Just do a search for Barcelona City FM. Um, now, one of the questions that uh, has frequently come in. In fact, it came in. It came in before. Um, was in terms of what are the kind of questions that you ask people uh, when they're trying to choose property? They come here, often international buyers come here, they're not too sure what they want. What are, what are good questions that they need to be prepared to answer? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's like anything, right? If you want um, um, you, you to buy a shirt or, or a dress, um, you can either just walk into a shop and then try on some, some, some clothes and then maybe go to a different shop, etc. And if you know the shops where to go, maybe that's not too difficult if you have some time. Mm -hmm. But a dress costs maybe 100 euros or 200 euros. If you want to spend three, four, five hundred thousand 500,000 euros or a million euros on, on a property, the comparison and the decision making is a lot more important because you don't want to make mistakes. So people that come, um, it, they very often don't, or they very often struggle to define exactly what they would like to have. So. It's, it's describing your dream place. Right? If you assume it's, it's, it's a place where you want to live yourself with your family. So questions I ask them, isn't it? And there's at least three very important um, elements. So this one is, um, are you like, a, how are you as a person? Are you, are you, you love design? Are you more like a rational person? You want to optimize space? Um, do, you, um, do, do, do you have a family life or do you live alone? You get many visitors because many many international people have often visitors coming over, so they need some more space for that, and sometimes they don't think about it. Um, but these things help us to define what type of apartment and um, what characteristics you need for the apartment. Um, and it's not just about size, right? It's, it's not just about how many bedrooms or, or, or bathrooms we need. Um, it's really about uh, distribution of it, lo its location. It's uh, do you want a modern building, an old building, something? Uh, uh, does it need to be? fancy design or is it just if it's all, all right to move in and, and, and the bathroom, bathroom kitchen are clean, is, is, is that enough? Fine. So let's see what type of, of, of apartment, what characteristics we need. And then two is people, I think 80% of people, they can't 
write a number down in terms of what budget they want to spend on it, they say, hmm, not sure. And you, you can't... You, you, know, you, you can't search something. Okay, you can't do a targeted search if you don't know what the budget is that you want to spend. Right? And I think, I mean, you've said previously that you really need three hundred k or more to have some choice here. Is that correct? If you, yeah, if you if you look at the the center of Barcelona, so the the the, 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 the center, I mean, the the part where you are kind of walking distance to all the nice parts of the city, and you can really enjoy a city life here without having a car, without too much hassle. Um, I think we we see many people look for two bedroom places um, in a nice location, and then prices start around three hundred. It, 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 it can be a bit lower sometimes, but it's it's typically the prices are going up, so it's, you, go, you go rather to three fifty these days. Um, and it's definitely three hundred k around the court from where we are sitting now here in Poblenou. You yeah, want to find a place? Yeah. It's three hundred k. Yes, yes, or 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 more. Um, but but imagine if if you come from new york or, or san francisco or, or some other place and you know barcelona but you don't know it really very well it's it, it's hard to understand what are difference between poble now and Echambla, Echambla, maybe poble sec or san gervasi some of these areas um there's obvious differences in terms of the of the area um how it looks like and who lives there etc but also in terms of what apartments uh, you find there what are the price levels in in these areas so it's conversations where if people tell us, okay, we have 500,000, then there's still then the third point, and let's then talk about location, location strategy, where do you want to live, and you, your kids need to go to a certain school, yes or no, and um, that, that impacts the area. If you need to go and work and be on the highway every day, so uh, we, we got a, a buyer now. He, the kids will go to school as of September in, in uh, Castel de Fels, so south, south from Barcelona, direction Sitges. And he loves uh, probably now, but it's that's not easy because you need to cross the entire city every morning and every evening. Um, it's not really so, 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 so that, exactly. We're now having a, a very in interesting location discussion there. Like th there's maybe better options, I mean, not so close to the sea, maybe. But try try and balance what type, what needs to have in terms of the apartment and the size and the usage and so on, with budget and with um, and and where is a good location or where are potentially good locations for you. Mm, interesting stuff. Um, now, I know in general there continue to be some big shifts in the market, don't there? Uh, now, of course, this is not just limited to Spain. In general, we're seeing demographic shifts throughout Europe. We're seeing an increasing... I mean, there's permanent demand for uh, smaller properties as families split up, sadly. So you've got two people that need two smaller houses <laughs> than one big family one. Uh, is there anything specific to Barcelona, any shifts you've noticed in what people are looking for? Mm. I mean, we see... Uh a, a lot of demand for small apartments that's clear uh, one two bedroom places um, it, because you say smaller families or, or, or split up families um, but also um, international people that come and live here they, they don't need a 150 square meter four bedroom place um, they, they are happy with something smaller and maybe in the future they will buy bigger if they if they're really convinced they love the, uh, the city and so on um, so small apartments for sure um, we see a clear trend in 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 people again starting to take mortgages for for their purchases because money is cheap today you can get it that one dot one one dot two percent we see people signing mortgages so it means if you for every one hundred thousand euro the bank gives you you give them you give them a thousand one hundred back per year that's, that's ridiculously low it's historically sure. low so and people pe so people go finance 50 60 70 percent sometimes of, or sometimes more of of what they what, what they buy, or of the of the value of the of the property they buy, um, young young people are 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 very interested in in buying. They struggle a bit more with financing uh, sometimes because they, they don't have the, the the track record of, of uh, or the financial track records. It's a bit more more difficult, but definitely the, the international audience is international buyers is, I think, is a clear trend that's um, that changing the market. Because those people are a bit less price sensitive in many cases. Um, but but can I just challenge that slightly? Because I know that some some investors they they bought here in Barcelona, planning on making money from the short term let market. But mm. uh, in the context of recent news about the difficulties with Airbnb and this yeah. potential restriction of uh, well, basically, unless you've got this tourist license, yes. you can't use these short term let websites. Mm. Uh, do you reckon this will have much of an impact? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm sure it will have. Um, 
and, and I'm sure that many people, many investors that have bet on this um, short term tourist tourist rental market, many of them will have sleepless nights these days. I'm, I'm, I'm sure because they, 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 they put money into a model that they knew was in a gray zone. Um, so it wasn't really clear. Can you rent it out? Yes or no. Legislation wasn't really clear. Now it becomes very clear. Now it's, it's no longer allowed to do it. So if you've, got in, if you've invested in these areas, and that's typically in, in, in prime locations, right? That's in the old, old part of town, et cetera, or, or probably now, or Champlain. Um, and you can't, uh, and, and suddenly someone from some local authorities just, uh, just shoot at your business model and you say, sorry, your revenue stream is gonna change dramatically. Um, those people will have problems. We actually saw, because that was in the news, I think it started being in the news a few weeks ago, and I know it, it was in, in the news again, that the, the city of Barcelona is, is now forcing uh, platforms like Airbnb to take off all the properties of the platform that don't have uh, an official license. Mm -hmm. um, we saw as, a, as one of the first reactions to this, um, this week we've seen uh, two, two apartments that we visited for potential clients wanted to buy it. Um, the owner was renting it out um, on through, through, through websites. I don't know if it was Airbnb, but through, through similar sites. Um, he's worried now. He says, I can't keep doing this. So his reaction is, I'm selling. Um, because he doesn't have a lot of appetite to go to the long-term traditional rental markets. Um, uh, probably he put too much money into the apartment when, when he bought it. Uh, so the there's one impact that we've seen clearly this week, and I don't know if this is going to continue, but I think that it will continue because it, it, it makes sense uh, that this will impact the number of apartments that come on the market for sale in the in the short term. So people that say, I don't rent it out anymore or I can't rent out anymore. So I have to run interface. OK, I sell it. Let's forget about the the problems and let's try and do something new with the money we get from it. Now, many people would say that this is actually a good move because uh, there is a limited supply of property, tourists are flooding the city, and actually the longer term rental market needs more supply. Would you agree with that? Um, it, it's, a, it's a difficult statement. Eh, to, to this, um, so yes, the long term rental market has definitely a shortage of, of, of supply. Um, but as what we've seen this week, I'm, I'm not sure if Certainly, not all of these apartments will now go into long-term rental markets. They will not. So some of them are, are going to be are going to be sold, right? So that's different. Um, th there's lots of tourist apartments. That's right. I think there is. I mean, any any city needs to find a balance between um, how how you integrate this this new model of this new way of traveling and and, and staying at apartments instead of hotels into your society, into your economy locally. And, and I think that answer is unclear today. The Barcelona didn't didn't manage, to be honest, to, to integrate that nicely. They just took now a, a, a black and white decision and say, stop it, we don't do it, instead of building a framework for um, for allowing people to get some extra income. This, this whole thing, there is... But then, but you see, see, I think they would argue that if Airbnb had stuck to their original mission statement of allowing individuals to rent out spare rooms, then that would be one thing. But hasn't it been sort of the platform has been taken over by companies that have got 20 or 30 mm. apartments? So uh, that was never the plan, was it, when they allowed Airbnb to get things started? Mm, no, m maybe not. But I think it's it's a natural trend, right? If, if you see there's an opportunity in the market, I mean, everyone wants the most value from his savings. Um, if you're a local living in Gotico and, and you have an apartment that's empty, I mean, what, what do you do? Leave it empty or rent it out? Or rent it out. If you're an investor and you've got three apartments or five apartments, you probably want to rent it out and you want to rent it out at the best price. So I think that's, that's natural. But uh, I think there's a, there's a philosophical dimension to the whole discussion, which is, I mean, if certain people... Um, have licenses, pay licenses, pay taxes for every person that stays per night, because that's what it is, right? You, for every person that stays per night, you need to pay a certain amount of tax to the to the authorities here. So if people do that, and then imagine your neighbor also rents out his place, and he doesn't pay for a license, he doesn't pay taxes on... Uh, I mean, that, that there's a question of how fair is that? Um, so I think from, from that point of view, I fully understand that they're saying, 
we need to have a, a bit of a model where, where, where we, um, it, it's, it's a level playing field where you, you, you can do that, but there is some rules to, uh, to participate in the game. Uh, you need a license to operate in this, in this game. And I'm the first one to, to, to defend that. I think if there is a way, if there's a balanced way to give the people here um, some additional income, source of income, I mean, wh wh why not? It's, it's good for everyone. It's good, it's good for everyone. And it is also true. I don't know if you've seen, I mean, the hotel prices are crazy. If you want to rent, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a, a tiny, tiny corner room on Calle Trafalgar in a certain hotel come, coming in at 299 euros a night. And it was absolutely, it was room for the bed and that was it. I think that's the, well, I, don't, I think that is because it's just a lot of tourists as well. Right? So I'm not, there is probably some link to, to, to this reaction from or prohibiting the, the, the illegal apartments on Airbnb. But again, beside the philosophical question, if it's fair to do illegal things, huh? so I think that that's one discussion, then the, the, the economic implication on the business is, um, um, yes, there will be now less supply of short-term rental apartments. Some of them will move to the long-term rental market, some of them will move to the sales market. But it means there is less places to stay if you come for a city trip. So I, I mean, my, my, I studied economics <laughs> a long time ago, so supply and demand. If, if there is less supply and demand is coming up, because there's more tourists coming, there is a good indication that prices might increase and um, are increasing already maybe in, in some areas. I mean, certainly if you look at the center, right? The Trafalgar is, is, is a very centric location in, in Barcelona. I haven't yet got to the stage of putting a bed in the studio and advertising yeah. radiobeds.com, <laughs> but we're not far away, I tell you. Um, okay, so let's just summarize here, Raf, for me now. In your opinion, in your experience, what are the top five uh, properties uh, or kinds of clients that... Yeah people that you come across today? Yeah. So um, there's different groups. And, and, and as I said before in, in other shows, uh, we work with, with buyers from international buyers. Around 70% of our, our clients are international buyers who want to buy here. Some people live here already, but they're, they're non-Spanish. Uh, so they don't speak the language well, don't understand the process well. They are not sure who to trust and what to sign and when to pay and these kind of things. And then 30% are local buyers. They have different challenges. Um, lack of time and, and, and family life is too busy, et cetera. Ty types of, so who's buying and what type of properties are they looking for? One, on one side of the spectrum, we have the, um, the, the, the 30, 35 year old person who wants to buy his or her first apartment. And they, they've, they've got whatever, 10 years of working experience, a bit of savings. Um, might get a little help from mom and dad maybe and are ready to 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 take a mortgage mm -hmm. so that's one type of buyers and what what is their challenge they're very busy at work they're building their careers and many of them they don't have kids yet so they they're they just they love they're always traveling if they got a holiday they they, they prioritize um lifestyle leisure etc um and what kind of property do they search for? That, that, they, they look for the smaller things, like the 60 square meters, 70 square meters, two bedroom apartments. Um, locals typically want one specific area of Barcelona. Other international people, they, they are a bit more flexible in terms of, of, of um, where they go. Um, but one example is a person, we, we're working now with someone who is um, Sp he's Spanish, um, but he doesn't live in Barcelona. He works for a company that they... Um, in the north of Spain, like I think it's seven hours drive from here, so it's not easy. His girlfriend lives here. He wants to live here in the future. He knows it's a good time to buy. The bank told him he can get 80% of the purchase price financed. So he's like, I need to buy something now. It's the right time. Um, but no time. He's never here. Um, uh, who's going to visit these places? Who's going to find them? Because he's been searching on the internet for, for a month. Um, so that's, that's one type of of buyer and, and he doesn't want to make a mistake because he doesn't have a lot of money. Yet. These young people, I mean, they need a lot of financing. Mm. So, they, so Okay, so that's the 35 year old who's searching yeah, for yeah, apartments. Yeah. Who's number two? Number two is the, um, it's, it's the young family with, with kids, um, uh, 35 to 45 years old. Um, people that typically have some more savings, have some a good income, um, have kids and start to think about the future now. They. Um, they want to build up something, um, some, some, um, some, 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 something they own, a property, 
Um, and many of them, they actually, they, they buy something where they won't live. They buy to rent it out because not everyone has sufficient budget or sufficient funds to to buy a 150 square meter, three or four bedroom place in Barcelona where they want to live. And many of them are renting today. Or they, they live in a smaller place. But they do have sufficient to buy a three or four hundred thousand euro place, which they rent out at really good rates. They use that. But they, they have what they have in mind is I've got something for my kids now, right, for the for the long term, for the future, um, it's a property. So they're trying to get leverage on their ability to borrow money. Yes, yes, yes. But they, they, their main purpose is to, they don't want to maximize the short term, the short term returns on their investments. They, they think long term. This is a property you have, it's a certainty, whatever might happen, we, we have it. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got a buyer, and you said literally, you said, if, if which they own one property, they bought a second one. And if one day something goes wrong between us as a, as a couple, I mean, we have two properties, the kids will be, will be saved. So, so, so people are planning. It's, 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 it's family, well, not family planning, it's, it's financial <laughs> planning for that. That's for a different uh, kind yeah. of radio show. Yeah. Okay, num number three, what's the third category? Yeah. I think um, a, a third category is the, it, it's, it's, let's say, the 50 to 55-year-old person. Um, the gray hair or slightly bald uh, <laughs> person who has had or has good savings, has good income, and is thinking not about the kids, but he's thinking about retiring. He's thinking, we, we've got many clients that are working in big multinationals and in big multinationals between 52, 55, many times you get a golden handshake and we got one of these um, examples here, a, a Belgian guy. And um, so he says, I, I, I just wanna get some return on my investment. And when I retire, I wanna have something where I can go to. Mm. Uh, and I don't want to go to Brussels, or no, I don't want to go to Paris, I want to go to somewhere nice, Barcelona, for example. Oh, so it's a retirement property for someone to live in. Yes, but in the meanwhile, they rent it out, because in the meanwhile, yeah. they, they, it's okay, but I'm not retired yet. Uh, but it, this person, for example, his, his daughter is, I think, 15 or 16. He's been a few times with her here now. She's coming with her friends now. Nice. So, so uh, I think probably in two years, he's going to stop renting it out, and he's going to enjoy it for him and, and his family. Fantastic. Um, so okay. that's a different type of... Of, of, of buyers who are a lot faster in decision making. Those people are a lot more mature. They, they have done this maybe in, in, in before in their lives. Mm. Um, they look at it very different. It's very different from a from a thirty year old first purchase where everything is new and you you you're uncertain. Uh, sure. mature maybe. Excellent. And what's the final time? Yeah. Then another group is the uh, pe people that go more that they really want to live here themselves. That's that that move to Barcelona. Um, an example is working with a US couple. Um, they got two kids and she works for um, a big multinational here. Um, so they moved already, they, they rent now. They pay 3,400 3, euros rent per month, so massive budget. So they say, we don't want to keep doing it. We need, we need to find a solution, we need to buy something. He runs his own business working from home. So what do they look for? They just say, we, we, we want our dream place here. And they, they look at budgets of between 1.2 million and 1.5 million. Uptown, nice place with two parking lots downstairs. If there's a, if there's a pool, great, close to the international schools, um, and and for them it's it's not an investment. It's a, they have money, they have, they, have, they leverage the bank a bit, I think. Um, but for them it's 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 a dream. It, it's it's where they want to live and they want to. That's put my dream. Into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So. so you see, it's different huh, from very young people who. Um, who, who buy to, to all the people thinking about retirement plans and, and, and lifestyle. Um, but what we do see is, and I think that's a shift we are seeing in the market, um, the time that, that people would buy through just going to an agency or searching on internet for properties is changing. I and mean, people still do that, of course. Um, but the agencies are not doing a good job in, in building a reputation to help the buyers. They, they keep creating a mountain of, of um, bad stories of bad examples of things that went go wrong um so the, the the fact that people start to use more and more and more these people that only help them the buyer agent the, the property fund what, what what we do basically at inspire is, is increasing and and it's logic is um um you, you don't want to make mistakes and you want to make sure you take the best decisions sure. uh, absolutely you know many times when um ma many of our customers when you need to take a decision and we say, so what do you think? And what, what about price, what location, et cetera. Many of them, you, and, and surprises me sometimes, they say, whatever you think is the best. 
<laughs> and it, I, I hear it's a big compliment, yeah, sure. but it's also a big, big, big stress on, on, on our shoulders because they, they really trust what you're recommending them. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's nice. It's nice to, to, to work with these clients because if, if we find something for them, they recommend us to, to them. Well, obviously, clients, you're, so. you're convincing guy but you're, obviously you're you know you're transparent and honest and direct yeah i so think that 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 i mean i'm gonna tell you all our secret sauce that we have in the in the, in the kitchen but um it, to me it's, it's extremely clear that if, if someone is gonna gonna spend so much money on it um we only gonna be can help you if you're successful we will be successful as a company and and and, that, and that's very simple this, this is not a, a business model that where you buy by you sell but we, we don't sell low value uh, goods or whatever no this is an important decision in people's mm. in people's life so um, maybe the most important decision maybe for many it's the it's the, it's the most important and, and typically the most expensive uh, purchase you do in in their lives yes absolutely, absolutely. hey well raf uh, just for a moment how can people get in touch with you so um, there's different ways. I mean, we can clearly, con if, if they're listening now, they can connect through your, uh, to the radio's Facebook channel. But our website is um, inspireapartments.com. Um, you can also go to our Facebook page, which is Inspire Boutique Apartments. Uh, there you find more information about the market. Um, we're creating some nice videos now, testimonials of, testimonials of um, people have bought um, through us. Um, or just um, contact us uh, directly to, to email, which is info at inspireapartments.com. Fantastic. Yeah. We, the first thing we do is just have a good conversation with people. Um, I'm, I'm not saying what we do. I'm just asking, what do you want? That, that's the first question we, we have in this initial conversation. If you see there is a match and it works well, then we can move to the next step and, and make it more tangible. Brilliant. Well, Raf, I must say a big, big thank you from all of us at Barcelona City FM for coming on the radio over this last period. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. And uh, we we'll absolutely look forward to catching up with you again uh, and we can find out what the market's been doing, how it responds to this kind of August calm down period. Yeah, sure. Maybe it's worth mentioning that there is this, we wrote this, as a reaction to these radio shows, we wrote this buyer guide, um, which is available on our website. It's a guide with tips around what to take into account when you buy in Spain. Um, it's also on um, City of Ems, um Facebook. It is. So people can just go on to inspireapartments.com, download it there, and then if you have just for, for some uh, early stage questions on, on the buying process in Spain. Absolutely. Raf Jacobs, thank you very, very much. And we look forward to your company again on Barcelona City FM. Thanks, Jim. You've been listening to the uh, Real Estate Show coming up at one o'clock this afternoon. Delighted to have the team from Barn America live right here in the studio in Poblano. Cheers for now. Bye. Thanks.